Believe it or not, there was a time in my life where I had to choose between the necessities, guns, beer, and luxuries, food, rent. I drove a 1992 Mazda 626 with over 100,000 miles on it, and that piece of shit broke down all the time. I had to take double shifts, waiting tables to make ends meet. That was called college. Nowadays, I'm certainly no Rockefeller or a Hickok 45, but I have been lucky enough that I can pick up some pretty nice guns from time to time for myself. Recently, you guys have seen me scratch the shit out of a shotgun itch. I bought a Benelli M4 and a Breda 1301, both of them expensive Italian tactical 12 gauge semi-automatic shotguns, and I think they're two of the best shotguns on the market today, at least, for personal defense. I shot the 1301 and the M4 at the Thunder Ranch Combat Shotgun Course, and it was perhaps the most fun I've ever had with my clothes on as an adult. I really love the 1301, so much so that I made a video about how to set it up for defensive use or for the course. So I bought a $1,200 shotgun. It needed a $200 magazine extension tube with a sling mount and a light mount, a $100 Blue Force Gear sling with hardware, $400 Burris Fast Fire with mounts, $150 worth of $15 S-Tac shotgun cards, and about $100 for a chest rig to hold them all in, all in all, in the hole for over two grand. And that's not including the price of a light, which is a pretty essential piece for your home defense shotgun. I had a ton of fun making a video, but there were a number of comments asking me to consider making a budget version of that video. Now, while I don't mean to step into Hop's well-worn path, of poverty tier gun reviews, I felt that I was challenged by you, the viewers, into making the Wish.com version of the 1301. My goal is to build a semi-automatic home defense shotgun that is going to be reliable and effective for 500 bucks. Most of the welfare recipients in the comments suggested that I look into Black Aces Tactical. I was familiar with Black Aces Tactical, but just barely. So imagine my surprise when I'm at Gretna Gunworks with the gentleman there perusing the inventory for a cheap shotgun, and there is a semi-automatic tactical style shotgun for 400 bucks out the door, tax tag, title included, and it is a Black Aces Tactical Pro Series S Max. It's a gas-operated semi-automatic shotgun made in Turkey. With Turkey, you never know what you're gonna get. The country has a long-running history of firearms manufacturing, and they even make some good ones today that are affordable, but they also have a long running history of trying to squeeze every buck out of the consumer by cutting corners with manufacturing processes. I snapped it up anyways, and home I went to get on Amazon to get the essentials as cheaply as possible. I have a hundred bucks left in my budget. When I say this is the wish.com version of the 1301, I mean that almost literally. Try to get a flashlight, a mount, a sling mount, a sling, side saddle for a hundred bucks or less. Turns out, you can and you only have to make a couple of compromises. Now, the big expenditure for me was a flashlight. I wanted to get a decent flashlight, so I shelled out 40 bucks for a Streamlight Polytech. It's the highest rated flashlight on Amazon for under 50 bucks with that oh-so-rare perfect five-star ratings and thousands of reviews. Again, that's something I didn't want to cheap out on, and I'm just glad I didn't have to buy an Olight because then all of you would know what a filthy shill I was at that point. Of course, you need a mount for your flashlight, so my second largest expenditure was a whopping 30 bucks for a decently rated H-mount made by Monstrum that would made up to the barrel in the magazine tube as you see here. Both sides have a QD cup for a sling, but it also comes with a one inch ring for your flashlight, and you can do that either side, top or bottom. That leaves us 30 bucks to get a side saddle and a sling. I think that S-Tac makes the best shotgun cards. Shotgun cards being these semi-rigid pieces of Cordura that have these elastic loops in them for shotgun shells. As I explained in the last video, these are vastly superior to a hard side saddle. All you need to do is mount it to some Velcro loop material on the side of your receiver, and I like to put another one here on the opposite side of my buttstock. No tools required, far less expensive, simple. When your cards go empty, you just tear off your empty card, you retrieve a full card, slap it on there, and you're good to go. I don't get the point of getting a hard side saddle anymore. But the bad news is S-Tac cards are 15 bucks each, so if I bought two of those, that would completely eat up my budget. As we expected, Amazon delivered the goods from the Far East. There were a couple of decently rated shotgun cards on the Zon 
for $7.50 each. That means I could get two of them for the price of one STAC card. I prefer the seven round cards because the seven round cards are the same size as an M4 magazine, so you can use them with M4 chest rigs. However, there are these five round cards that were very highly rated. I like the Ranger Green, and the quencher for me here is that the, the name of the company is Excellent Elite Spanker. How can I say no when your options are this thing or that thing, but that thing has Spanker in the title? And mother of God, just look at the English in this Amazon ad. I love the print here, love the text, want to meet this marketing dude and talk about getting him to work for TFB TV. Look at this stuff, I love it. So all that said, I've got 15 bucks left for a sling. I got the blue collar Patriot sling. A little disappointed they couldn't jam another Americanism in there, but it is, importantly, US made and it costs 15 bucks. There's not much to it. You guys can see it's like, I don't know, four feet of nylon and it's got a couple of polymer or synthetic sliders here. So you're not going to be able to adjust this thing on the fly. It seems like the same material from like the VTAC sling, like it's that kind of nylon. But again, it was highly rated. It's made in the US. It cost me 15 bucks. I'm okay with it. Shotguns get a little hungry. Now, while we do have seven rounds in the gun and five rounds on either side, giving us 17 total rounds in the 1301 video, I had 35 rounds in a chest rig, but that was almost $200 worth of nylon for the shotgun cards and that rig. So for this video, I'm using a Jansport fanny pack that I had lying around. I'm not going to include that in the cost because that is a fashion necessity and you can stick a few sleeves of shotgun shells in your fanny pack, leave it next to your shotgun, and it's actually easier than throwing on a chest rig. So it's a pretty decent compromise, pretty straightforward and inexpensive. Two days later, I receive everything from Amazon. I checked out these spankers and they seem fine. They actually seem pretty good. I don't know enough about soft goods to know why these are half as expensive as the s -Tax, but they're definitely a slightly different type of material, a little bit less rigid, probably assembled by some slave kids in China. I cleaned off the receiver and the stock with some rubbing alcohol, stuck them on there, and away we go. I was super jacked about my budget flashlight and my flashlight mount. I actually zapped myself in the mirror, I couldn't help myself, with the stream light, and even in dim indoor lighting, I realized it was a really bad idea to look directly at it. It hurt my eyes a bit, kind of like any Harry Potter movie, but it was shorter and slightly more fun. My first impression of the light is that it would be more than sufficient. It was bright enough, decent throw, especially in the house. Now, the mount, on the other hand, Felt like it was made of Chinesium, but it would be serviceable, at least as far as construction. The design, on the other hand, is a different story. So I read two sets of reviews, some of them encouraging, some of them discouraging. Some people saying, this is plug and play, just mount it up, tighten up the screws, you're going to be good to go. Others saying that this mount is way too big for their barrel and their mag tube, and it would fall off at the range. They'd have to find a way to secure it on there. Unfortunately, I fell in the ladder camp and with the black aces tactical this mount is too big so that meant i had no idea i was in for a 25 minute long cursing cluster f installing this thing the problem is that they give you a couple of foam shims so if it's too big you can put those shims in there but those shims are absolute pieces of shit. You can't put the foam shims on the magazine tube because if you do that, then you can't disassemble the gun for maintenance because the ring that holds the barrel can't slide off of the magazine tube. Now, if you put it on the mount directly, then you can't separate the mount. What do you do? Well, I threw away the shitty shim foam and I came up with a pretty brilliant idea here. Just put a shitload of tape on the barrel and I just cinched this thing down as hard as I could, screwed it in as hard as I could and loctited the threads. If I'm gonna be totally honest with you, if there would have been a neat, clean fit for everything, I would have been disappointed. Something on this gun needed to be held together by tape in order to bring together the full tragic poverty vibe that this gun is begging for. Moving on to the flashlight. So this Streamlight Polytag uses a one inch body and it just so happens that this monster mount comes with a one inch standard ring. So I get the pocket clip off, took a little bit of persuasion to do that, pop it in here, tighten it up. I don't tighten it too much because I was a little worried about the rings maybe 
cracking the body, this polymer body, but it got on there and man, it is in there really well. And I actually like the setup. I was a little worried that I wasn't going to be able to buy a remote tape switch. But here, where the light's mounted, I can actually use my support hand really well to turn the flashlight on either momentarily like that or to click it on, click it off. So I'm really happy with it. And frankly, I don't think I would spend any more money on a tape switch. Next thing, attach the sling. Actually, rigging up the sling was easy, as it should be, because it only uses these two sliders. There's literally nothing to this sling other than a means to fasten it to the gun via the buckles here. The sling's a standard 1.25 inch width, which makes a lot of sense because it's standard. However, the split ring sling mounting point up here on the Black Aces shotgun, which is not removable, is in some fucked up metric size like it looks like maybe it's 0.9 inches maybe one inch and even better when you go and you look at the uh, the mount here on the back this is basically a glorified wood screw with like a 0.75 inch sling mount point now our Chinese light mount has these QD cups on either side which is nice but we needed the light to be on the left hand side of the gun as I just showed you and I don't like running this sling, your front sling point, on the opposite side of the gun because it makes the gun want to roll over. Speaking of roll over, the mounting strategy turned into a wedding night rope push where I just had to force this flaccid sling into holes that were too small for it to fit into. After I did that, I found that the kind of bunched up sling in here, it worked, right? And it kind of looks a little ghetto, thereby complementing our electric taped barrel. I mean, it all gels. It all gels into the look that we're going for here anyways. And as I sit here today, it's mid-July. I have not fired this gun yet, at least not intentionally. I have 500 rounds of miscellaneous 12 gauge from new production all the way to shit from the 1980s. I'm going to lube the shotgun up before I take it out of the range, which is something I did not do for the 1301. I took the Beretta right out of the box and I ran it. I don't trust this shotgun enough to run it raw dog, is what I'm trying to say. Now before we get out to the range, let's talk about the specs of this shotgun. As mentioned, this is the Black Aces Pro Series S Max, a lot of words, semi-automatic shotgun, gas-powered 12-gauge semi with an aluminum receiver that keeps it surprisingly lightweight. It's 6.4 pounds, basically the same weight as the 1301, but the 1301 uses lightweight synthetic furniture. You can actually get decent looking walnut furniture with the Aces Tactical, or you can do what I did, which is to get the black furniture. It's not synthetic. It's just that decent looking walnut furniture with a not so decent looking black spray paint job. I'm not even kidding. But even with wood furniture, spray painted wood furniture, it weighs only 6.4 pounds. 18 and a half inch barrel, six plus one capacity with two and three quarter inch shells. Yes, the website says five plus one capacity. Maybe they're referring to three inch shells, which this shotgun will actually take. It's got a nickel plated bolt, charging handle and bolt release, and a good all around length of pull of 14.25 inches, a workable overall length of 39 inches. It uses Benelli Noble style chokes, and it even comes with a pistol grip in case you hate looking like you know what you're doing. Unlike the 1301, you've got no Picatinny rail up here on the top of the receiver for an optics mount, but it's a little bit of a bummer, not that big of a deal. An optics mount on a shotgun is not really essential. The loading gate down here actually works pretty well, but this gap right here in this little scallop cut, this little half moon is just the wrong size that when I was loading it for the first time, I unintentionally got my thumb very painfully stuck in the in between the gate and the inside of the magazine tube for about 10 seconds. That was hurtful to both my thumb and my ego. Feast your eyes, boys. Here's the final product. Even with electrical tape on the barrel, even with the cinched up sling and this heinous billboard of a roll mark on the right hand side, gotta admit, not really that bad looking. And I even caught myself clearing a couple of rooms in my house when I was alone. Don't act like you don't do it when you've got a new gun that you're really jacked about. I'm not gonna be the only one here that's in trouble because I've got the balls to admit that I do it. Right now this gun is brand new. I haven't shot it. I will check back with you in a couple of weeks.